so I think that I was watching a video uh, from Cold Dragon Forge about grain and heat treating, grain growth and heat treating. And it got me thinking that maybe I should check my own grain growth and heat treating process on the 5160 that I use. Um, so that's what today's video is going to be about. It's going to be about uh, the heat treat process that I use, the grain growth that I get. At the end, we're going to snap a piece or a couple of pieces and see what it looks like. Um, and we'll go from there. If I need to improve it, then I'll improve it. If I need to keep it the same, then we'll keep it the same. But ultimately, that's what this video is going to be about. So. All right, so we've got our three pieces. Uh, I'm gonna keep one just the way it is. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit on the grinder, take off the sharp edges. I'm leave one in the forge the entire time that I'm doing the thermal cycling and everything on the other one, up until I put it into the annealing because I like to anneal them. Um, and then I'm going to take it out and of course let it sit too. Um, and then this one, I'm going to do the complete uh, heat treat cycle up to the quenching. I'm not going to temper it. And then we're going to break them all and see what they look like, what the differences are. So I'm going to start by cleaning them up on the grinder. Then we're going to throw, light the forge and get things started. So here we go. Almost stretched it out all the way. Um, I'm trying to get it stretched out to the width of my anvil here. I just got a little bit more to go. And then we're going to do some thermal cycling. So typically I do three thermal cycles. Um, usually after I forge it out a blade or something. I put it in some vermiculite to anneal it, that way I can drill holes or uh, mill it, well, file it down to uh, a shape and things like that. It just makes the steel soft and uh, more pliable. It's easier to, to cut into and stuff. Um, I didn't do that with this one. Um, I'm just going to do the thermal cycles. After I anneal, I do the three thermal, thermal cycles. I let it sit out on uh, an insulating block until it gets, you know, I guess uh, six, seven hundred degrees. Um, maybe a little bit cooler than that. Sometimes I just let it sit there until I can touch it. Um, then I pick it back up and put it in the forge. I usually do that three times. Um, then I heat up the oil and I quench it. So that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to do some snap test and see what the grain looks like. So.
So I, it's doing the last cycle, I'm going to preheat the oil. So I've got a old railroad spike here that I've stretched out a little bit that I heat up. Then I dip down into the oil to try and preheat it. It's supposed to heat oil up to about 120, 150 degrees, I guess, before you quench. So this typically does pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna heat it up and we're gonna heat, use it to heat up the oil. And then we're gonna heat that piece back up and we're gonna quench it. Uh, I'm gonna quench the one that's been sitting in the forge this whole time as well. So. This is the first piece that we're going to break. We're going to see what the grain looks like from the factory. And then we're going to do the one that soaked for 30 minutes, whatever, 40 minutes. And then we're going to do the one that I forged out and did some thermal cycling on. And we're going to see um, what the grain looks like in each of them. Let me try it again. So, if I can get it out. So this one is straight from factory. Now we're gonna put in the one that uh, just set in there and heat it up for however long that we had the forge going. Uh, better part of 30 minutes or so at least. Um, probably 17, 50 something like that now it's been quenched but it's not been tempered so it should be fairly breakable fairly shattery it wants to break it's it's very um hard it's very brittle right now so here we go see broke fairly easily actually it's still hot so I'll slide this piece of leather in there maybe and try and catch it actually that turned out pretty good too and it actually sat in there for quite some time. I was expecting to see a lot of grain growth. Should have had a lot of grain growth. I've had it, had it in there for quite some time at a fairly high temperature. Um, I don't really see that much. Maybe, yeah, I can touch it now. Hmm. The next piece is the one that I forged and moved around and did a whole bunch of stuff to, and then put in the quench. So we're going to lock that in the vise here and we're going to um, see what it looks like. It's still hot too. Actually, I'm going to break it off up here at the tip. And then I might go a little further down and see if the thickness, even as thin as it is, makes a difference. This is after thermal cycling. It's still, you see, you can't even hardly see any separation in the grain. That's actually pretty thick pretty good grain so this is the one that sat there in the heat versus thermal cycling you can definitely see the difference there now so and then this is the original just from factory so from factory super large grain uh, just sitting in the heat it actually looks like it shrank the grain and then after thermal cycling.
So I'm actually going to break the one that I thermocycled just a little further down, just because I'm interested to see what it looks like all the way through. Lock it down pretty good. This stuff likes to break. Makes me nervous sometimes. So, there we go. So, still fairly decent grain. It's nice and powdery. That black spot is actually a crack. Where I, when I quenched it, it might, might have been a little too hot or something, I guess. Um, but you see how it looks powdery? That's the type of grain you're going for. And that's what thermal cycling brings to the table. Uh, you thermal cycle it and you uh, bring it up to a critical temperature and let it cool back down two or three times. Like I said, I like to nail it too. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, anyways, that's it. Like I said, um, Cold Dragon Forge is the one that um, got me thinking. I was watching one of his videos. He was talking about grain growth and thermal cycling. And I thought I would come out here and take a look and see how mine appeared. Um, and it looks pretty good. Uh, look him up. He's got several videos out there. He's a, a bladesmith, a blades maker, maker, and um, he does pretty good work. I enjoy watching his videos, and yeah, he's got some good ideas, good thoughts out there. Thank you.